Hey guys, this particular video is going to be dedicated to solving a fairly challenging curvilinear motion problem. So here's the problem. Let's say that we've got this ball bearing just here, and this ball bearing is mapping out a circular path, right? And let's say that it's also constrained to move due to this slider which is trapping it, right? And the slider is moving down at a constant velocity of 0.5 meters per second. And it's a constant velocity that's really important. Right, and we're asked to find the magnitude of the acceleration at this instant. Well, I'm going to start generalizing the solution in what I think is the easiest method to solve this particular problem. But there is a small disclaimer I want to make, and that's that this problem can be solved in many different ways. Okay, so have a problem with your have have have, have attempt this problem yourself first, and then come back when you're done. Okay, well, first I'm going to draw just part of the arc of this circular path our ball bearing is mapping out. This is our ball bearing just here and this is the circular path we know that its velocity will be tangential to the path this will be our velocity vector v but we also know that our velocity vector can be split into both horizontal and vertical components this will be vx and this right here will be vy just there right and because we know that if we were to continue this line up towards the center point of our circle we know that this angle here is 60 degrees, meaning that we know that this angle here is 60 degrees. Likewise, because we know this is a right angle triangle, we know this is 30 degrees, and because this is a right angle triangle, we know this is 60 degrees. I hope that makes sense. Okay, well, using this information, we can redraw our, our magnitudes of our velocities underneath, and this is what it looks like. This is the magnitudes of our velocity vectors. This is going to be v, this is vx, this is vy, right? And of course, this is 60 degrees. Fortunately for us, we know that cosine of 60 is just going to be equal to adjacent over our hypotenuse, which is going to be vy over v. Now, I'm going to try and generalize this particular solution, so I'm going to use theta instead of 60, and I'm just going to plug theta is equal to 60 at the very end. Likewise, I know that vy is actually 0.5, but I'm going to plug that in the very end. So that means we know that v is going to be equal to, let's see, it'll be vy divided by cosine theta. But we really know that vy is just going to be equal to 0.5, and we know that theta is going to be equal to 60 degrees. I'll plug that in the very end. I want to generalize this solution. Okay, so now that we've got the velocity sorted, let me box that in so I can signify its importance, let's talk about our acceleration. So to do that, let's actually redraw this part of the circular slide just here and redraw a ball bearing at this particular point. We know that our acceleration vector, so this is our acceleration vector, can be split into two components. We know it can have a tangential component, which I will call AT, and it has a normal component, which I will call AN right and that basically means that our acceleration vector can be written as the sum of both vectors at so in the tangential direction plus an in the normal direction right that's our that's our acceleration equation likewise we also know that an is going to be equal to v squared on r from circular motion i'm going to um, go into the importance of this later likewise we also know that we didn't have to split our accelerations in terms of n and t. That wasn't completely necessary. We could have, if we wanted to, split it in terms of x and y. We could have split in terms of ax and also ay if we wanted to. So this would be ax and this would be ay. Meaning then that our acceleration vector could have also been written as ax times by your i unit vector plus a y times by your j unit vector. Both ways of expressing our acceleration in terms of these types of vectors is completely fine. It doesn't matter which way you approach this. However, we're going to be talking about the importance of expressing it both ways so you can take a small shortcut. Notice that because the veloc velocity of the slider is constant, that means the acceleration in your y direction is zero. To explain why that is, let me actually write it down. We know that the velocity of y is constant at 0 0.5, right? Which means that because we know that a y is going to be equal to dvy dt, we know that the derivative of any constant is zero, so that means we know that a y is going to be equal to zero. Basically, this term doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's gone. The acceleration is purely in the horizontal. So let me just get rid of this just there. That basically means that this right here is gone to zero. Okay, now let's redraw everything we know below. Let's redraw everything we know below. 
First of all, if I were to redraw our circular arc one final time, it would look like this. This would be our ball bearing, and this right here would be our acceleration in the x direction, also our total acceleration as we've just proven, because the acceleration as I've just proven is purely to the right, or purely in the x direction. Right? We also know, based off this equation alone, just this one, just this equation alone, that the sum of the two blue vectors must equal to this green vector, right? You can see this mathematically. Let me write that down to really hammer out its importance. We know that our acceleration in our tangential direction plus the acceleration in our normal direction must be equal to the acceleration in the x direction alone because ay is zero. Basically, if I were to draw this, this would be a n and if I were to draw this green vector, that would be AX. And if I were to draw this head to tail, this would be the vector AT. Notice they're vectors, so I could draw them wherever I wanted. I could have drawn AT over here, but for the sake of completing the triangle, I decided to draw the vector AT over there. Is that all we know? Not quite. We also know that theta is 60 degrees. This angle here is 60 degrees, right? So we, let, let's draw that in. We know that this is 60 degrees just here. I'm going to actually call that theta for the sake of generalizing the solution though. Okay, so we also know this is a right angle triangle because our normal direction is perpendicular to our tangential direction and presto, we have a right angled triangle. This is our right angle triangle. Bam! And that is AX just here. That's AX and this is AN, and this is AT. And this, of course, is theta, or if you like, 60 degrees. We can evaluate AX now by using trigonometry. We know that cosine of theta, once again, is just going to be equal to AN divided by AX. Remember, adjacent divided by hypotenuse, right? Fortunately for us, we can arrange this to find AX, and I'm going to draw that all the way up here, so follow me. This is going to be AX now is going to be equal to AN, AN divided by cosine theta. I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, as, as, as a minor stopping point, as kind of like a checkpoint to this problem, I want to mention that there are several ways we could go after developing this formula. I've decided to solve this problem graphically by drawing this triangle, but you didn't have to do that. You could have, if you wanted to, solve this problem analytically by solving for ET, EN, and I, and plugging this in and solving simultaneous equations. There are several ways you can solve this problem. Anyway, back to it. Okay, so now we know AX in terms of an and theta, so let's substitute an. We know that's going to be equal to v squared on r, so this is going to be v squared on r cosine theta, right? Fortunately for us, v is just the magnitude of our velocity vector, which we calculated earlier was vy on cosine theta, so let's substitute that in. That's equal to, let me plug it in, this is going to be vy divided by cosine theta, cosine theta squared all divided by r cosine theta, right? And if you simplify that down, we're left with ax. ax is going to be equal to vy squared divided by divided by r cosine theta cubed, cosine theta cubed, right? So this is our solution for our acceleration in our x direction. But recall. Earlier I mentioned that our acceleration vector is equal to AXI plus AYJ, and because AY was zero, that means that our acceleration vector is just AXI. Meaning then, that this also describes the magnitude of our, vec of our acceleration vector. And to prove it, let me, let me go through it step by step. Recall that the magnitude of our acceleration vector is equal to the square root of AX squared plus AY squared, ay is zero, so this just becomes ax, right? So that means the magnitude of our acceleration now, the magnitude of our acceleration is going to be vy squared over r cosine theta cubed. That is our generalized solution. But in this particular context, vy was 0 0.5 squared, and r was 2 meters, and cosine theta that was uh, 60 degrees. Once we plug that into our calculator, we're left with a solution of one, one meter per second squared. That is the magnitude. That is our answer just there. This is our answer. This is the magnitude of our acceleration, right? 
That's our particular answer. I hope that makes sense. Before I end this video, I just want to talk about the ways you could have approached this problem. There are several ways you could have done it. Um, I, ch I chose what I thought was the easiest way, but you could have also done this by calculating angular velocities and angular accelerations. I hope that makes sense, guys. I hope you learned something.